Welcome back, my ninjas, to another Contrast 101. Today we're going to be painting Adeptus Astarte's Ultramarines chapter. That's right, the most loyal of the loyal, the ones who literally wrote the book on being a space marine, the Ultramarines. To begin, we're going to need, guess what, guys? This one's going to be a big surprise, Ultramarines Blue. I know, you're shocked. Sit down, take a deep breath. Grab a swig of wine or, or tequila or whatever your poison is. Ultramarines Blue to paint the Ultramarines. I knew that was a surprise. This is a Primaris Reaver. Most of the Marines we've painted on this channel have been Reavers because this channel got the Reavers for cheaper than any of the other models. The colors we're going to need for this are going to be Ultramarines Blue, Snakebite Leather, Black Templar, Blood Angels Red, and some sort of white, uh, an opaque white, probably like a Corax white. I use Reaper Miniatures Pure White, although you can also use Vallejo or Privateer Press or Games Workshop, whatever you got. You got a white paint, you can use that white paint. So as you can see, what we've started with ninjas is we are liberally coating this entire Space Marine in Ultramarines Blue. We're going to go ahead. We didn't have to do the face paint. We will be covering over the face plate later with that white that we just spent 37 minutes talking about what different kind of white you could use. We're just going to make sure we get everything. You don't have to cover over the pouches. You don't have to cover over the face plate. You don't have to cover over uh, the knee pad because I'm going to do a knee pad. You could you could cover over the knee pads. You could not cover over the knee pads. I'm going to show you some, some little decorative space marine tips in a little bit. We're doing most of the gun in blue. We'll come over and we'll hit parts of it in black in a bit. But uh, space marines do like to color code their guns with their armor. I suppose this is just in case maybe uh, uh, ultramarines are fighting alongside some dark angels one day and they both drop their guns in the battlefield and then the ultramarines like oh no the quartermaster's gonna kill me if i don't turn in the right gun so let's make sure my i pick up the blue one and not the green one i guess i don't know now we're gonna take some black templar black templar one of my favorite colors and we're gonna go over the bits of the gun that are are not blue that's that's really fairly straightforward it's most of the uh the bits of the gun there where he's grabbing the clip the little handle the barrel at the front before somebody comments yes you are correct i did not drill my barrels i am assuming if you're following these contrast 101 videos the point of these is to get your unpainted models painted as quickly as possible using the contrast method and drilling out the barrels on 35 marines is not the quickest way possible. So now we're going to paint some of the straps. We're going to paint that. Uh, and now we're getting to the rubber undersuit. I think it's rubber. I always paint it like rubber. Uh, and, and the GW people in the books, they always paint it like rubber. So I'm going to assume it's a textured rubber undersuit that hugs the Marine, provides life support functions, and... Uh, Maybe there's a, a massage unit in there. Gently provides a relaxing shiatsu massage as they gently and warmly, happily purge the heretic. That's what I think's going on with that suit there. So we're going to make sure we get all the details of the suit. We're going to make sure we get all the little straps that hold the backpack down, the little vents on the side of the backpack, the gun. You could paint the, the soles of the shoes. I do not. Uh, I assume the soles of the shoes are whatever they are. Now we're going to take a little bit of white. And this is an opaque white regular paint. This is not the contrast apothecary white. Please do not use contrast apothecary white for this step. We're going to paint over the pouches that uh, we painted blue before because we want these pouches to be leather. We don't want them to be blue plastic. And yeah, I know you can dye leather blue. It can be done. I've seen it at the Renaissance Fair. Um... But we want these to look like leather, and leather reads the most like leather when it's leather brown. And this is the same reason why even though Tyranids and Orcs and Tau and Eldar are alien organisms, we still assume they have white teeth and red tongues, uh, because teeth and tongues read as teeth and tongues when they are white and red, although occasionally black tongues do exist. Um... So leather reads as leather when it's leather brown. For that, snake bite leather works really good. Wildwood works really good. 
Uh, most of the skin tones in the range uh, work really well. Uh, they just read as slightly different leathers, and that could be because leather is skin. I have not explored that. I have never skinned a, uh, a Grox to see what color it is. So we're just taking a few extra seconds here and hitting all the little straps. And there's lots of these things. Space Marines love their straps. It's almost like they were designed by Rob Liefeld in the 1990s. I wonder what he keeps in those pouches anyway. Have you ever thought... If you know what that Marine has in those pouches, ninjas, leave a comment below letting me know what you believe is in those pouches. Now we're going to hit the faceplate with a little bit of white because the Reavers have this really cool skull faceplate. I really like it. And we're just going to hit that with a little bit of white. Bring out the sculliness of it. Fine tip brush running along the cheekbones. Make sure you get the eyes. You want the eyes to be white so that when we go over the eyes with Blood Angels Red in a little bit to give them a red glow, uh, that's not going on top of the blue. Very lightly, run your brush along the uh, iconography on the front. That'll bring that skull and crossed swords imagery out. Make that pop. And again, we're just going for quick. There are better ways to do it, fancier ways to do it with more colors where you can make the swords metallic and so forth. But we want this guy done fast. We've got 35 of these to paint and our tournament is tomorrow. And we just decided to go with the Ultramarines because we can't stand the Iron Warriors. Iron Warriors are chaos, by the way. Now we're painting the trim of the shoulder pad white. It's important to be neat on this step, but I point out it's easy to be neat on this step because the trim is raised. So as long as you're holding your brush in a way that it won't touch the surfaces that are lower than it, a little bit of back and forth there, nice clean lines be real easy to keep it from going where you don't want it to go. I want to point out, a lot of people ask me sometimes, where's the holder that I'm using? This holder is a Rathcore holder, R-A-T-H-C-O-R-E. This is manufactured by uh, PK Pro, I believe is the name of the company. I'm also going to paint this knee pad white. And why I'm painting this knee pad white, Ultramarines like to use a knee pad to indicate what, I guess, campaign markings. If they've gone on a particularly adventurous campaign that they wanted uh, remembered, they wanted their sergeant to remember, oh yeah, you were at the Battle of, uh, you know, such and such. We'll, we'll paint your knee pad with that campaign to indicate that you were there. And you can wear that as an honor badge. It's not unlike the medals and honors that soldiers today carry and wear to commemorate the wars and the battles they were in and their achievements. Uh, Space Marines just literally paint theirs directly on their armor. So that's where we're at here. And we're going to need to give this white paint just a moment to dry. It won't take much. And then we're ready to move on to the next colors. Now it's contrast, snakebite leather. Anyone want to guess what we're going to use the snakebite leather for? That's right. It's those pouches and straps that I said not 30 seconds ago we were going to paint with snakebite leather. Snakebite leather is one of the more fun and interesting contrast colors because it looks really cool and has a variety of colors as it pools in different ways. So feel free to let this snakebite leather pool on those pouches, especially around the straps, buckles, and flaps. That's really going to give out the bring out the detail and really add some interesting variety of color. There's a there's an olive green undertone in this snakebite leather that I love. I think it just looks so good.
Now we're going to take a little bit of Blood Angels Red, and we don't need much. Uh, we're going to take a very, very fine tip brush, and we're and we can do our Null Oil and our Blood Angels Red at the same time. We're going to take Null Oil, and we're going to brush it over that face mask. Partly to bring out the eyes, partly to bring out the nose and the teeth and the skull, and also to bring out a little definition around the side edges where the white panels meet the blue panels. We're going to dry our brush a little bit and extract some of the excess gnome. We don't want the gnome pooling in the eye sockets. We don't mind if it pools in the cheeks. We don't want it pooling in the eye sockets. We're going to put a little bit of gnome around the icon on the front as well, and that'll put a dark black line where white meets blue and really help emphasize that color. You can see right there how it really brings that out. Now we're going to take just a teeny, teeny, tiny drop, the tiniest drop of Blood Angel's Red, and we're going to put that in the eye. Oh, boom, look at that. And on the other eye, oh, boom, look at that. You don't need to do anything else. Let's make sure it's in there. If you got a little bit where it didn't need to go, wipe that off real fast. Contrast paints are good at that. Do a little bit of white cover up. There we go. Bring out those cheekbones. The Nuln will darken the color, so it's okay to re-go over it. Just don't cover up the details you've already painted. One of the things we do on this channel is we make mistakes and we show you how you can correct those mistakes because I'm fairly sure that most of you are probably prone to the same kinds of mistakes as most of us. All right, so hey, let's look at that shoulder pad. It's time to paint an Omega, an upside down Omega for the Ultramarines. So we're going to take a little bit of white paint on our brush. I'm wiping some of it off on my thumb because I don't want there to be too much paint. And I'm going to start with a straight line that's the top of the U. Very light, very delicate, nice soft curve. Take your time. If you wanted something even faster than this, you can do transfers. Ultramarine's transfers come in every bloody box GW ever made. But if you freehand on your Ultramarine logos, it makes it look like you spent a little more time with it. Fools your opponent into thinking you're a better painter than you are. do something that chapter marking on the knee you can literally put any design you want down here you want a box put a box you want a star put a star you want checks put checks dags put dags make a paint a symbol I literally just painted a circle I considered putting some spikes on the per circle radiating outward make it kind of like a red Sun but at the end I thought you know what this guy's just a grunt he's not worth that much effort so now we're going to take a little bit of, uh, I think this is Warp Lightning, and we're just going to throw Warp Lightning on the on the base to provide a green undercoat. We're going to be putting a Grell and Badland down in a moment, and that's going to crackle and crack and provide gaps between that brown. And I want the little bit of, of green to show through. And what that's going to do uh, is make the earth look well, greener. I use Acryl and Badlands on several of these figures along the way, and it often ends up looking like a very sandy desert brown. And I actually get a, a slightly greener color underneath it uh, uh, by having that green show through the crackles. So we'll put a little bit of dirt down and we'll base rim it black. As a matter of fact, we're getting close to the end here, ladies and gentlemen. So now it's time for me to do the thing that we do here on YouTube. We ask you to like, share, leave a comment, and subscribe. Um, I want to remind you guys, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash 7ninjas. Uh, if you check that Patreon out, just $1 a month helps keep me buying models to, that I can use on this channel, buying paint that I use on this channel. I uh, recently was able to purchase an upgraded microphone, headphones, and uh, purchase brand new software that I'm able to use to edit these videos together. 
Uh, it also helps me, you know, keep in models. And I'm coming up, I want to invest in a new 4K camera so that future videos on the channel, uh, starting in 2020, future videos on the camera will be shot at a significantly higher resolution. So if you do want to support my Patreon, just $1 a month goes a long way. If you can give more, give more. Uh, if you want to suggest models for me to use in the future, you can do that in the comments. It's more effective if you do that on the Patreon, where you uh, uh, pay and tell me what models you'd like me to paint for. You provide that model, I will paint it the way you want and return it. So we're just going to throw a tuft of earth down on here, tuft of grass, and I think that just adds a little bit of detail. Don't do too many of these, especially on your base level grunts. Uh, if you want to put a couple, three or four down under under a hero, that's fine. So I want to thank you very much for joining me. If you like this video, leave a like. Leave a comment with the kinds of models, factions, and colors you'd like to see me do in the future. I've got, at this point in the game, something in the neighborhood of uh, 40 videos on the channel already. and uh, would love to do more with your help. We can make that possible. A little bit of Athonian camo shade helps bring out that green, by the way. All right, thank you so much, my ninjas. Thank you for letting Seven Ninja Studios take your army from gray to great.